What's up everyone, Craig here with Weeping Willow Guitar Lessons. In this lesson we're going to take a look at Jerry's parts from the Weir Barlow composition, Estimated Profit. Estimated Profit is an odd meter, psychedelic reggae tune that served as a vehicle for some really great jamming by the dead. It was first performed on February 26, 1977 at the Swing Auditorium in San Bernardino, California. This was the same show that introduced Terrapin Station. For its debut and a handful of times in early 77, Estimated Profit was played in the first set, but soon settled in its place as a second set song. It was played nearly 400 times, the last time being on June 28, 1995 at the Palace in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Alright, if you're enjoying these lessons, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and share these videos. Alright, let me know in the comments your favorite version of Estimated Profit. Without further ado, let's get to the lesson.
All right, so we're taking a look at Jerry Garcia's parts on Estimated Profit. All right, the first thing you'll notice about the song is that Jerry uses an envelope filter effect on his guitar. So normally the guitar would sound like this clean. But with the effect, the envelope filter, we have this. Alright, the next thing you'll notice is that the song's in 7-4. So we count it like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. And the uh, main riff is a two-bar phrase, so it's two bars of 7-4, and it sounds like this. Alright, so that main riff is based out of the F sharp minor pentatonic scale. You're probably familiar with this shape starting in second position, so we have our index finger on the second fret of the sixth string. And we have two, five on the sixth string, two, four, two, four, two, four on the fifth, fourth, and third strings, then two, five on the second and first string. So we're going to replace that fifth fret of the sixth string, that A note, with the open fifth string. So we have. And since the uh, riff only uses notes on the bottom four strings, let's just take a look at that. So we have second fret of the sixth string, open fifth, second, fourth on the fifth string, two, four on the fourth string, and second fret of the third string. So get that under your fingers and then let's try the riff together. <clears throat> so it sounds like this again. Alright, so we start on the second fret of the sixth string, play that, and then we rest for a beat, then we play the open A string, fifth string, and then we rest for a beat, so one, two, three, four, then we have second fret of the fifth string to fourth fret of the sixth string. And so Jerry usually adds like some extra notes in there, for example. So the first thing you should do is just get this under your fingers. And then try adding the uh, second fret of the sixth string. You can either do it um, right before the second fret of the fifth, or you can do it before both of those notes. So, or so once you get the main riff under your fingers, experiment with different variations. Obviously, Jerry always changed it up. All right, now let's look at the second measure of the phrase. So we have an eighth note rest followed by the second fret of the third string, and then a quarter note fourth uh, fret of the fourth string. So, one, one, two, one, two. Then we have another eighth note rest, followed by the second fret of the fourth string, and then the fourth fret of the fifth string. So, one, two, three, four. Then we have the fourth fret of the fourth string, then the second fret of the fifth string twice, then open fifth string, and then the riff starts over. So that second measure sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and then you put those together and you get this. All right, now a little faster. All right, that's the intro. So now let's take a look at the verse. All right, so Jerry's part during the verse, the first measure, he just strums an F sharp minor chord, and as per usual, Jerry plays it with his thumb. If you want to, you can do it as a bar chord, but just play that whole six string chord. So that's for seven beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the second measure, so that's that reggae feel. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 All right, so um, sometimes Jerry just does that. Other times, for the first measure, he'll do this. So he'll play down, and that would sound like this. So just experiment with um, variations of that. And then we get to the, so that's four times, and then we get to the pre-chorus, which is this riff. All right, so again, this is out of the F sharp minor pentatonic scale. And we're using the open A instead of the 5th fret of the 6th string. So you should still have those notes under your fingers. And it sounds like this. So we have 2nd fret of the 6th string twice. Then open 6th string. Then 2nd fret. Then we have an 8th note rest. Followed by the open 6th string. And then the 2nd fret of the 6th uh, string. So... All right, so when you're learning this and getting it under your fingers, it might help to count it like this. So just play the uh, riff. Now when you land on that, starting with that, count four. So one, two, gets the timing right because you have you know four beats that you're holding on that second fret of the sixth string all right then the second bar sounds like this so we have the same as the first bar uh, second fret of the sixth string twice followed by open sixth string followed by second fret of the sixth string then we have an eighth note rest followed by the open sixth string and then the second fret of the sixth string twice now we're going to play open fifth string second fret of the fifth string fourth fret of the fifth string so those two bars together sound like this.
All right, then that takes us into the chorus. And let me just talk about the right hand. So usually when Jerry plays this part, he tucks the pick away. But I prefer just to do hybrid picking. So I'm gonna keep the pick in my hand and play the uh, notes on the um, the lower end. So starting off on the fourth string, I'm gonna play with my pick. Then I'm gonna use my fingers. And in this case, I'm using my middle finger to play the notes on the second string. So that's up to you. If you wanna just uh, tuck the pick and play it finger style like Jerry does, or if you want to do hybrid picking, either is fine, but just thought I'd mention that. All right, so the chorus sounds like this. Alright, so what we have going on here is we start, so we're coming out of the pre-chorus. And Jerry usually just lands on a G right there, and then he moves his hand up to 8th um, position. And we're going to um, start with our uh, ring finger on the 10th fret of the 4th string, and then our pinky on the 10th fret of the 2nd string. So this lick, he starts off later, you'll see that we do it as dyads, or two notes, but he starts off by doing a single note line. So it sounds like this. So we're gonna slide from the 10th fret of the fourth string to the 12th fret of the fourth string. Then with our pinky, play the 12th fret of the second string. And as I mentioned, you can either do it hybrid picking like I do, or if you want to tuck your pick and do it finger style like Jerry does, choice is yours, whichever is easier, or whichever you prefer. And then we're going to then slide the notes back to this. So we're letting this ring the whole time, and we're sliding that 12th fret of the... <clears throat> second string down to the tenth fret of the second string but all the notes should still be ringing then we're going to keep our uh, ring finger on the tenth fret of the fourth string and we're going to put our index finger on the eighth fret of the second string all right and then we have so we're going to slide those two notes, 10th frets of the 4th and 2nd string, up to the 12th frets. Then we're going to go back to the 10th fret, play those, and then pull off from our pinky on the 2nd string to the index finger on the 8th fret. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to play the 9th fret of the 3rd string with our middle finger. We're going to play the 8th fret of the 1st string with our index finger. So after those first two measures of the chorus, then the rest of it, it continues with this move, but then alternates between the uh, 10th fret of the 4th string and 8th fret of the 2nd string, and then the 9th fret of the 3rd and 8th fret of the 1st. So both of those are based out of a C chord shape. So we have the root and the 5th, and then we have the 3rd and the root.
So let me play that for you slowly. So coming out of the pre-chorus. <laughs> So that continues. So total. So all together, we have this one. Then we do two times. So then we do the first half once again. Then we have a G chord, tenth fret of the um, fifth string, then twelve fret to the fourth, third, and second. And we're going to play an F chord and a C. And you can do, I mean, you can descend like I did there. So 10, 10, 10, 8, 9, 10. Or you can ascend on the F, descend on the C doesn't really matter. The point is you're just following the chords. So again, I'm just going to note that Jerry plays his power chords with his pinky. I prefer to do it with my middle finger. It's just easier for me. And then we go back to the verse. All right, so now we repeat the verse and the pre-chorus and the chorus. And after the second chorus, so we go through the... Go through that whole thing. And then we have this extended chorus part that leads into the bridge. And it sounds like this. All right, so we have a G chord. We're still in G. Uh, I see this as kind of an extended chorus part. And um, so we come down here to G and we play. So we strum the G chord. Again, Jerry likes to play it with his thumb. And we have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the strumming pattern is down, up, down, up, down. We're gonna flatten our ring finger and play the fifth frets of the fourth, third, and second string. So a C chord. And we go back to G. So right here, Jerry, he's doing this little trill where the minor third to the major third. All right, so if you bar the third frets of the third and second string with your index finger, then play the fifth fret of the fourth string with your ring finger, then we're going to hammer on pull off the fourth fret of the third string with our middle finger. on pull off then we play down up again so down on the G and we're gonna play F to C so this F to C um, again the pattern changes you can just play about anything you want the uh, one I'm playing here I think I took from the uh, Cornell 5877 show and it sounded like this. So ascending the F major triad. So third fret of the fourth string, second fret of the 
third string and first fret of the second string. Then playing the open G string, third string, but kind of ghosted. And then second fret of the <clears throat> fourth string, third fret of the fifth string. All right, so that's four times, and again, you can do about any variation you want. So you can do that one I just showed you, or you can um, use the uh, fourth, uh, fifth, fourth, and third string set. So for F, it would be third of the uh, third fret of the fifth string, third fret of the fourth string, and second fret of the third string. Then for the C, it would be 3rd fret of the 5th, 2nd fret of the 4th, um, open 3rd, and you could do um, a descending pattern. So for F, C, or you can um, ascend the F, descend the C. Alright, so there's three variations to play with. Again, I'm going to stick with this one for the demo. So do that four times, and then we go into the bridge. So the bridge starts off by alternating between a D minor chord and an E major chord. So Jerry's part is a single note riff and it sounds like this. Alright, so we have the 5th fret of the 5th string which is a D. So we're going to alternate between that note and the uh, C, 3rd fret of the 5th string. So twice on the 5th fret, then the 3rd fret, then back to the 5th fret. Then we have an 8th note rest followed by the 3rd fret of the 5th string, then the 5th fret twice. Then we're going to play the 3rd fret of the 5th string. 2nd fret twice, then open. So we'll walk down. Alright, together. Then we go up to the 7th fret of the 5th string. And we're going to alternate between this and the 5th fret. So we have... So 7th fret twice, E twice, D or 5th fret, and then back to 7th fret, 8th note rest, 5th fret, 7th fret. Put those two together and you get this. All right, and again, you can have variations. If you just want to play a second fret once or anything, you can come up with countless variations. Sometimes uh, for the E chord, you might add the ninth fret of the fourth string, that B, a fifth, so you have a power chord, and then slide off. All right, so here's what I wrote out for this part. All 
So we move between D minor and E three times. Then the fourth time we're playing D minor, but then the next bar we start with a different riff. This is over an F chord and we have this. So it goes from F to A and the riff sounds like this. So we have the first fret of the sixth string, then we're going to slide from the third to the fifth fret, then we're going to play the third fret of the fifth string, then slide from the fourth to the fifth fret of the sixth string. And that now we're landing on an A for the A chord, and for that we're going to play fifth fret of the sixth, fourth fret of the uh, fifth string. Then the 7th fret of the 5th string and 7th fret of the 4th string. So we're playing an A triad. So F. So that's based out of the F major pentatonic scale. With the chromatic passing tone. Then we have an A triad. Alright, then the next chord is a B minor to D minor. So for the B minor chord, we're going to play 9th fret of the 4th string, B. Then we're going to play the 7th frets of the 4th, or the 3rd and 2nd string. So that's going to be root, flat 3rd, 5th, a triad. Then we go up here to 10th fret of the 1st string. Here's our D minor chord, and we're going to play. So that's 10th fret of the 1st string, then we're playing 10th fret of the 2nd, 12th fret of the 3rd, 10th fret of the 3rd, back to 10th fret of the 2nd. So the, that's a triplet, triplet, triplet. And then another triplet, we have 12th fret of the 3rd, 10th fret of the 3rd, 12th fret of the 4th. So it sounds like this. Alright, and then the chord progression goes from an A minor to a C minor. So we're taking that same lick and we're um, adapting it to the chord progression. So then we go down here starting on the 7th fret of the 4th, then 5th on the 3rd um, and 2nd strings, then 8th. So once you get the uh, first shape under your fingers, that just repeats. So we have slowly, then we're going to take it down to G minor to B flat minor. And we go down to F minor. So we're playing F minor triad, third fret of the fourth, first fret of the second or third and second strings. And then we have. So what we're doing there is after we play our F sharp minor triad. Then we're going to add this uh, second fret of the second string, so we get a D flat major triad. So if you think of like a C chord, but then you rearrange your fingers, right there we have a D flat. 
Then we're going to add our pinky to the 3rd fret of the 2nd string. It gives us a D diminished triad. So we have... So we put all that together and we get this. And then we go into the solo. So it looks and sounds difficult, but once you get that first part under your fingers, and then this right here, that just repeats. So once you get that down and you know where to go on the fretboard, it's really not that difficult. And then the other thing is, of course, Jerry always has variations, so sometimes he... So learn the way I showed you first, and then try some variations, listen to some different versions, and, you know, just make it your own. So right after the bridge, we lead into the first guitar solo, and that's made up of the chords to the chorus, and the bridge. So it's G, C, F to C. And we'll take a look at what um, Bob's doing. Uh, when we look at Bob's parts to it, but it's basically just G to C, and then G, F, C. So it's those chorus chords. All right, so for this guitar solo, surprise, surprise, I decided to choose um, the solo from 5877 from the Cornell Show. And actually, I didn't mean to do this. Um, I've got lots of uh, transcribed parts, and I'm going to put those on my website, so you'll get lots of um, little bits of different solos that you can take a look at, um, figure out what's going on, and then come up with your own solo ideas. But I went with this because it, it's short. It's just, um, it's a total of eight measures. So it's basically four different phrases. And then some of the other solos I was looking at were just much, much longer. So I thought this would be a great solo just because it's a nice, tight, short solo. And it gives you lots of great ideas to really see what um, how Jerry approached this solo. All right, so with that out of the way, let's take a look. It starts off like this. All right, so we start by bending the 10th fret of the second string up a whole step. And then we're gonna play the um, 10th fret of the first string by that's bent. So we have, so one and two and. And then we have a muted note followed by. So we pre-bend that 10th fret up a whole step, release, pull off to the 8th fret, then 10, 8 on the 2nd string, then 8th fret on the 1st string. And we're hitting that C, so we're uh, targeting the root of the C chord. So we have... So when we start the solo off, you can see that as the G major pentatonic scale. So we're targeting the uh, third of the chord. So we're second, bend up a whole step to the third, then playing the fifth. working out of that G major pentatonic shape and then playing the C note for the C chord and we're gonna bend that tenth fret up again a whole step then we have the twelfth fret of the first string tenth fret of the first string and then we're gonna play the tenth fret of the second string then the ninth fret of the third string 
And then 8th fret on the 2nd string, ninth fret on the 3rd, 10th fret on the 4th. And that's our C chord. So for the F, we're hitting the A, and then we're going to a C. So we have... Alright, then our next phrase sounds like this. Alright, so this is a classic phrase and you hear this in a lot of his estimated solos. So we bend the 10th fret of the 2nd string up a whole step, then 8, 10, 8 on the 1st string. And then bend that 10th fret of the 2nd string back up. Then while that's bent, we catch the 8th fret of the 1st string, then we release it, the 10th fret of the 2nd string, pull off to 8, then we play that 8th fret of the 1st string, that C, targeting the C chord, so... Then again, bend that 10th fret up a whole step, while it's bent, we play the 10th fret of the 1st string. Then we're going to release the 10th fret on the 2nd string, pull off to the 8th fret, and then play the 9th fret on the 3rd string. And we're going to play that again and slide that up to the 14th fret of the 3rd string. Alright, after we slide that 9th fret up to the 14th fret, then we're going to play the 13th fret of the... 1st string followed by the 14th fret of the 3rd string. So that's the F and the A of an F chord. So the for the root and the 3rd. Then we go to this C triad shape. We're going to play 12th fret of the 1st string. That's the 3rd uh, of C. And then 13th fret of the 2nd string. That's the root of C. And then 12th fret of the 3rd string which is the 5th have this. Put those two measures together. Alright, now our next phrase sounds like this. Alright, so now we're going to slide from the 14th fret on the 3rd string to the 16th fret. So to, we're sliding into the B, which is the 3rd of a G chord. And then we're going to play the root of G, so that's the 15th fret of the 1st string, twice. Then just a muted note, then we're going to pre-bend the 17th fret of the 1st string, release and pull off to the 15th. Then we're going to play the 15th fret again. Then we're going to bend that 17th fret up. So we're bending that up a minor third, a step and a half to hit the C. Then we release that and we play the 15th fret twice. So, so far we have... Then we go down here and we're looking at an F chord shape, and we're going to play 13th, the 14th fret on the 3rd string, so flat 3rd to major 3rd, 13th fret of the 1st string, back to 14th fret of the 3rd string. So a very common Jerry move. And then we're going to pre-bend the 15th fret up a whole step on the 1st string, release and pull off. Then we're going to bend the 15th fret up a whole step on the 2nd string. So that whole phrase sounds like this. Alright, so we keep that bent for our last phrase. Then we play the 15th fret of the 1st string. Then we... Um, hit that 15th fret of the 2nd string that's pre-bent and we release it. 
Then we have the 15th fret of the third or second string. And then we're going to bend the 14th fret of the third string up a whole step. Release it and pull off. Then the 12th fret of the first string, 15th fret of the second string. Then we bend the 14th fret of the third string up a whole step. Hit it again, release, pull off. Then 14th fret of the third, 14th fret of the fourth. Then we're going to play the 12th fret of the third string, 14th fret of the fourth. Then we're going to slide from the 12th fret of the third string down to the 11th. Then we have an open A string. Then 10th fret of the fourth, third, second string. So that's our F triad ascending. Then we have a C triad descending. So 8th fret of the third. 9th fret of the, or 8th fret of the 2nd, 9th fret of the 3rd, 10th fret of the 4th, that's our C, then we slide off. So that whole phrase sounds like this. Alright, the whole solo together sounds like this. go back into the verse. All right, that's essentially the entire tune. We go back and we play a verse, and then it's just um, a solo over F sharp minor, just a jam over F sharp minor, and we will talk about that another time. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. All right, that's it for Jerry's Parts on Estimated Profit. Check out my site at www.weepingwillowguitar.com to download the tab. For other great info on this song, including transcribed licks from various Jerry solos. All right, thanks, and I'll see you next time.